What is up amigos? Today we're talking about the pressures inside the wheelhouse of a car. And these are very important because that can change the drag and the lift of a car. And this comes after a few conversations with one of you amigos, Rolando Tillett. And the results that we're presenting here comes from a paper I actually wrote uh, quite a few years ago. Now, I don't want to think about it. I'm not getting old, you're getting old. Um, so anyway, the pressure inside the wheelhouse, we have obviously the wheel here, and we've gone through in this video, the effect of the wheelhouse general shape and the location of the wheel in the wheelhouse. But for this one, I just want to talk about what the CP values are on this face here. And if you don't know what CP is, so the pressure coefficient, check out this video here. So in terms of the pressure coefficient, we usually have a little bit of a change as we go along. The most important thing to remember is that in this wheelhouse, the pressure coefficient is always negative. The difference is at this face and this face, so as you go around, they get less negative. So to begin with, it starts at about minus 0.15 and it ends up here at about minus 0.152. Then at the middle section here, which is really where we see the lowest values, depending on the car, it might rotate a bit more around here and there. But generally speaking, it's about at the middle here. And that will go down to about minus 0.25 minus 0.3. So that's all well and good the pressures, that gives us some information. But in terms of the lift and drag, if we decompose this, because we know that this face here is very much in the drag direction, as is this face. And as we go around the wheelhouse, it becomes more and more in the lift direction. So up here, it's obviously in the lift direction. And then here and here, it's more some kind of combination of lift and drag. So we can tell here that this face, because there is negative pressure here, that's actually making the car less uh, it's more draggy, so it's actually pushing the car back more because if we have high pressure here, low pressure here, which we do have high pressure here because the flow is coming in, stagnating, that's pushing the car back. Alternatively, on the rear face here, because we have low pressure back here, that's really pushing the car forwards. So whether or not the wheelhouse is producing more or less drag depends on a lot what these two faces are doing and whether they cancel out or which one has lower pressure than the other. In terms of the lift, this is a little bit more straightforward, and that's because we have a very low pressure on the top surface here. So obviously that is going to be pulling the car down. It's gonna be sucking it to the road. So that means that in terms of wheelhouses, generally speaking, we are going to be getting downforce occurring in them. Now, this also depends on how close the wheel is to this wheelhouse, because the closer it gets, obviously the more this low pressure here will start acting on this surface as well, and that starts to cancel out. So on one hand, we actually know that if you were to move this wheel away from this surface, we do get more downforce. If you move it closer to the surface, then you get uh, less downforce. The problem with that is we know that if this wheel goes more into the wheelhouse, we get less drag. So on the one hand, we get less drag, less downforce. But on the other hand, if we move it out, more drag, more downforce. So that is the wheelhouse pressures and what happens as you go along here and how they correspond to lift and drag. That is the end of this video. If you'd like to make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Peace, amigos.